going to show you how to edit a macro that you've already recorded. Now, the benefit of that is because oftentimes when you record a macro using the record new macro feature in Excel, you get particular cell references as opposed to ranges. Now, what I mean by that, say I record a macro in cell A1. When I run that macro, it's only going to run for cell A1. It's not going to run anywhere else. So if I select cell A4, it won't run the macro on cell A4. It's only going to run it on cell A1. So I'm going to focus on how to change that. And then I'm also going to show you how to change some of the formulas in the macro that Excel will create for you. So what I have here is a list of employee information on the left every row representing a different employee and I want to be able to very quickly with a macro extract from this four columns for the employee number, the benefits plan, region, and if they have a corporate credit card or not. So in order to make a macro out of this I have to insert a formula to pull it out. So what I want to do, I'm going to first go ahead and delete all of this and I need to record the macro and type in all of the formulas. Now I'm not going to go over in detail how to create the formulas. I did that in a separate tutorial. It's the It explains how to use the left, the right, and the mid functions. But uh, here I'm going to go ahead and record the macro. If you're not familiar how to do that, just go up to the Tools menu, Macro, then Record New Macro. And this screen's going to pop up. So what you can do here is go ahead and give your macro a name. I'm going to call mine data formatting. A shortcut. Mine will be control E. And a little description. Format employee data. Click OK. And this little box will pop up and your macro is going to begin recording. So anything I do now, anything I click or type in, is going to be recorded by the macro. So I'm going to go ahead and select this cell, type in equals, left, open parentheses. And before I begin, I'll just note, since I'm going to sort of breeze through this next part, if you type in any of these functions and then have an open parentheses below them, it's going to tell you what you need to input. So here I need to input the text or the cell reference and then the number of characters I want to pull in. So I want this cell and I want the first seven characters, in this case numbers. Close parentheses. For the benefits plan, it's in the middle, so I'm going to do equals mid MID this cell, comma, the start number is the ninth character from the left and I only want to bring in one character. I'm going to do the same thing for region. Starts on the 11th character. And I want to bring in two of those characters. Oops, I entered one too many commas. So, the last one is equals right open parentheses this cell comma one character close parentheses enter now I've done everything that I want the macro to record so let's go ahead and stop the macro and now I'm going to show you how to edit the macro so in order to get to the screen to edit it what you want to do is press alt F11 on the keyboard and you should see a screen like this so what you're going to see here is all of the Excel files you have open. Mine is right here. And it's just called Macros Edit Left Right. So locate the file that you want. Open up the modules. And select a module here. Now in the modules folder, that's where all your macros are going to be listed. So double click the modules. And if you have more than one, just double click all of them. Find out where the current macro you just recorded is and what you're going to see is the name of your macro up here so data formatting and below it this is just stuff to explain what's going on so the title description and what shortcuts used now this is all of the code 
So this is the code used to do everything you just did. And there's a problem with it. The problem is that you have these range, the ranges here. And when it says range, and then has a cell reference like C3 dot select, that means that when you enact the macro, when you run it, it's only going to run stuff in that particular cell, which means you really don't have any choice of where your data is going to go. I'll give you an example. Let's try and run the macro we just recorded. So I'm going to go back to Excel. I'm just going to click the Excel file on the bar line. I'm going to delete this. And now I'm going to run it here. So I'm going to do my shortcut, Control E. It records very nicely, gives me all the correct data. So now let me delete it and try it on a cell I did not record the macro with down here. And once again, it only gives me the data from this cell. It doesn't work with any of these and that's because of the ranges. That's because, go ahead and hit Alt F11 again, <clears throat> that's because of these where it says range. So that's very annoying and when you record a macro it's always going to do that. 